Adopted children have the potential to become part of a loving, supportive family when they have parents who want their very best and give daily effort. These children will thrive. Good-hearted parents will help adopted children so they can lead happy, healthy lives. Unfortunately, some adopted children are abused by their adoptive parents in various ways. This can include physical abuse, for example, beatings, emotional abuse, such as verbal insults or threats, and neglect, which may involve being deprived of basic needs like food or medical care. The exact negative experiences of Olivia Akokatis. One definitively heartbreaking example is when an adopted child is starved and neglected by his or her adoptive parents. In these cases, the child's basic needs, food, shelter, and clothing are not met due to the lack of love, parental attention, attention, or resources available in the home environment. The outcome is usually malnourishment for extended periods of time with long-term consequences on health, both physically and mentally, that can last into adulthood if left untreated early enough in life. YouTube family, now I'm going to share Olivia Akokatis's lifelong trauma, abuse, and legal case. You're probably wondering, how was she treated by these upper-class parents? A 19-year-old teenager named Olivia Akokatis revealed that she has allegedly experienced multiple years of torture, specifically beating, starvation, and isolation. Decades ago, when Olivia Akokatis was adopted, she was delivered by the state and an international adoption agency to these criminals and child abusers in her first months of life, according to court records. Olivia Akakatis, a native of China, was adopted as a baby in the U.S. Her birthplace was in China's Hunan province during the country's one-child policy. Sadly, her birth mother abandoned her in a trash can. Next, she lived in an orphanage for 14 months until her adoption. Her adoptive parents are Thomas and Denise Akakatis, who treated her like a slave. Well, her parent did not allow her to receive healthcare education, threatened her with deportation to China, plus her room was in the basement. I'll talk about that even more. She stated that her adoptive parents allegedly created a dungeon type of shelter for her to live in for several years. The dungeon type of shelter inside the basement was very tiny and filthy. Her attorney, Michael Lewis, was shocked to see the room. Michael Lewis stated, in quote, for a place that is as quaint and wealthy as New Hampshire, to not have solved this is distressing. This is a systematic issue, end of quote. On October 18, 2018, Thomas and Denise Akokatis were arrested because of their adopted daughter's allegations. In Olivia Akakatis' lawsuit, she alleges that the Boston Police Department, the New Hampshire Child Protective Service Agency, 
her parents and other institutions failed to protect her well-being, although they knew about the abuse. Meaning, professionals who are trained and licensed to protect the public knew about the longevity of abuse. The New Hampshire Boston Police Department finally filed felony level charges and arrested both parents. Allegedly, her parents demeaned her using racial slurs, regularly used a dog leash to tie her indoors onto a metal column, beat her with a belt, and force her to do hard labor. Interestingly enough, Wide Horizons organization visited the residents of Thomas and Denise Akakatis before Olivia Akakatis's adoption. They interviewed their own children who said they were beaten with a belt. She has siblings who confirmed a sufficient amount of information in the lawsuit. and gave a lot of details about that basement. On many occasions, she attempted to flee their house over the years. The police reprimanded Olivia Akakatis for escaping and returned her to her parents more than once. In 2004, Olivia Akakatis practically dug herself out of the grungy basement through the walls of the basement prison. She was 15 years old then. In her lawsuit, there's evidence that her dwelling did not have ventilation, heat, or running water. Once she got out, Olivia Akakatis ran through the nearby wooded area to a neighbor's house to freedom. In regards to social workers, educators, law enforcement, officers, and community members. It's important for those who work with adopted families to recognize signs that a child may be suffering from starvation, neglect, or any kind of abuse so they can intervene before it gets a lot worse. Signs of emotional, SUO, and physical abuse could include drastic weight loss over short periods, changes in behavior, struggles concentrating, depression, anxiety symptoms, poor hygiene habits, etc. Early intervention through therapy services, along with providing access to proper nutrition will help ensure that no matter what kind of situation an adoptee finds themselves in, they will receive support necessary for them to live safe and healthy lives. Please leave your comments below. I would love to hear from all of you. And remember to hit the notification button, like and subscribe to my channel. And Please share this information with your friends and family, my channel as well. Thanks a million and stay safe wherever you are.